where it began I can't begin to know it But then I know it's growing strong Hands Touching hands Reaching out Touching me Touching you Morning. We're going to have a look together today at two paintings which are a little bit unusual. They're not really linked together at all by their subject matter, um, but they are linked by the fact that neither of them seems to be completely finished. Now this first piece is by an, an Italian artist called Perino del Varga and he worked mostly in Rome. He had trained in the workshop of Raphael and he was trained as an, as a, an Italian Renaissance artist to create paintings that looked very carefully composed, very carefully finished. So this is a piece from, from 1528 to 37 and that long period of time across which it was created shows us just how much effort and energy was put into the composition of a piece like this. He was probably working on other things at the same time, but it's not the kind of thing that was completed in a day. And if you look closely at this, um, the very fact that it's unfinished can tell us all sorts of interesting things. It's possibly even more interesting in a way than it would be were it completely finished. Um, the figures in this picture are the Holy Family and John the Baptist. So you can see there Mary, the mother of Jesus, holding the child Jesus on her lap. Behind her would be the figure of Joseph, um, he's very much in the shadows because he's barely been painted at all. And in the foreground there is John the Baptist, Jesus's cousin, older than him by about six months. And you can see that Jesus and John the Baptist have been finished to a far greater degree than Mary or Joseph have been. And if you look closely at the figure of Mary, we can tell an awful lot about the way that Perino del Vago was working. Um, if you look at her face, I don't know how clearly you can see this um, at the moment, but uh, you would see that there are little tiny pinpricks. And this shows us that Perino del Vago was working from what we would call a cartoon, a sketch that had been made that he would then overlay and pinprick into the composition as a way of copying. Um, the rest of her clothing seems to be painted, um, seems to be sketched in, sorry, a little bit more freehand. So you can see there's a sort of relationship there between something that he wants to get perfectly right, something he's sketched already, was happy with, and wants to transfer exactly to this finished painting, and something that he's willing to play around with a little bit more and try out um, on the backdrop of this um, piece of, well, it's actually panel, it's oil on panel, okay, rather than a canvas. Um, the figures of John and Jesus show that he started to put some of the, the groundwork of their flesh colours in and then he started to shade on top. There's probably more shading to come. Now because of the time period, we know that this is a piece that would have been intended to have been finished to a far greater degree than it ever was. We're not quite sure why Perino del Varga didn't end up finishing it. Maybe the person who was commissioning it withdrew from that commission and it wasn't worth finishing it. Maybe he just never got round to it. Perhaps he's a little bit like me sometimes and it was on his to-do list and it never quite got completed. I wonder if you have to-do lists like that. Um, I don't know. Um, the second piece that I want to look at, um, these both actually come from the Courtauld Gallery, which is the gallery connected to the Art Institute that I work at. Um, the second piece is called The Turning Road by Paul Cezanne. Now it's separated from the other piece by not only almost four centuries, this is from 1905, but also from the fact that it's a completely different subject matter. So the only reason really that I'm looking at these two pieces together is because once again Cezanne's piece seems not to have been finished, or has it been? It's hard to tell in this instance. 1905, um, Cezanne was shortly going to die after painting this picture, so it's a very late work, and it was left in his studio when he died, and we don't know whether it was finished. In all likelihood it isn't, but what is interesting about it is that a lot of the paintings that Cezanne was doing around this time weren't that carefully finished anyway. 
So whereas here we can see a lot of areas of bare canvas and we can see the way in which he started to put in blocky sections of colour describing some of those fields and trees and little buildings in the background, probably including a church spire. Um, whereas here there's a lot of bare canvas, um, some of his other pieces around the same time did include bare canvas and it's something that he's starting to use very much as part of his technique. If you look at that little section there just beneath the spire of the church, actually it's the bare canvas that describes the edges of those buildings. The bare canvas itself becomes like a form of outline for Cezanne and the whole piece starts to become gradually more abstract. We can see that it is a landscape we can see the sky being described there by that beautiful blue um, in the top area and we can see the sketchy edges of some clouds but actually the patchwork fields beneath that start to become more like just blobs of paint on the surface of the picture. And Cezanne is often thought of as being one of the first really modern artists pushing towards abstraction and actually following him in the 20th century a lot of artists didn't bother to finish their pictures in a conventional way. Um, not they didn't bother particularly, um, but they, they decided that finish wasn't the most important thing. And artists were a lot more willing to leave areas of canvas unprimed or uncovered with oil paint. And the bare areas of canvas often became just as important as the painted areas, partly in describing what was going on and partly also in showing the sort of speed at which things had been depicted. Now Cezanne comes just after the Impressionists and the Impressionists have sort of started a lot of this really, so he's not the first person ever to use bare canvas, but he certainly pushes the boundaries a bit further than they had been pushed before. But again we can learn a lot about the way he's working. You can see there that there's not a lot of sketch in pencil or graphite on the surface of the canvas or charcoal you might use. Um, instead he's using some very dry blue paint to create an outline for that composition. So we can tell um, a lot about the working methods of these artists by seeing two unfinished paintings. Now why am I showing you two unfinished paintings this morning? Um, well, I was thinking a little bit this week about the way that sometimes I am frustrated by not having finished something, by not seeing something in a state of absolute completion. And it made me wonder if actually God is sometimes frustrated when he looks at me because I don't feel as though I am in a state of completion. And that got me thinking about Philippians, which says this, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. This is my prayer, a couple of verses further on. This is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So the good news is that we're not finished, actually. We are a creation in a state of constantly becoming, in a state of constantly coming to know more and more about Jesus, coming to love him better. Our knowledge and depth of insight is going to increase. We are not in the state in which God wants to see us finished. God is not an artist, he is not a human artist who is going to die partway through finishing us off. He is an eternal God and he will carry on working. He will not stop. Now, that doesn't mean that God doesn't ever finish anything, and it strikes me that actually there's a little bit of an insight into the Trinity again here. We just had Trinity Sunday, haven't we? Um, and I can think of two places in particular in the Bible where God describes something as complete. The first is God, the creator, at the beginning of the world, where he gets to the end of the day of creating something and says, it's good. And he gets to the end of his six days of creating, and having finished his work of creation, he rests for a day we see God the Creator having finished the work of creation. And then we see Jesus the Saviour on the cross. It is finished, he says. The work of salvation is finished. That process of buying us back from sin has been completed that day on the cross. Now that's not to say that God or Jesus are not continuing to work and we know that Jesus continues to intercede for us to the Father and the Father continues to love us as his children. But it's the spirit part of God that was sent to earth 
to continue working in us, that we may continually grow in insight, depth of knowledge and love until the day of Christ when we'll be presented blameless. Um, a little bit further on in Philippians chapter 2 this time. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. God continues to work in us by his spirit. So the good news is that we're not finished and that we don't need to worry about not being perfect. We should strive to continue growing in knowledge and insight and love and godliness. Absolutely we should. But God will work in us and through us and use us regardless of our state of unfinishedness. And in the same way as we can look at these two paintings and we can gain a lot from them, even in their states of incompleteness, actually God can use us in our states of incompletion. And that, I think, is a real positive to me in a world that seems very much imperfect around us at the moment. When I think about the events of the last week, I am relieved, mightily relieved, that God has not finished his work in our world. He may have finished his work of creation initially, but he has not finished his work in his creation. And he will follow that through to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So we are incomplete and that is exactly how it should be. We should be willing to continue being worked on by our creator God. Amen. <laughs>